Well, first of all, can I ask you, what was your first ever experience of watching musicals yourself? On stage or on yes, film? Yes, on stage. Well, it was a seminal um, evening when I went with my family to celebrate my mother's birthday to see a new musical in Manchester on its way from the north of England down to London. And it was written by and starred Ivor Novello, who's remembered these days for the Ivor Novello Awards for popular music. But at the time was the undisputed uh, king of uh, entertainment. He was extremely beautiful and glamorous. And though he didn't sing, he wrote the most exquisite songs. Keep the home fires burning, we'll gather lilacs, all sorts. And this, this show, King, The King's Rhapsody, a very sentimental operetta, really, uh, was overwhelming for me. I was about nine, I think. And the spectacle of it and the number of people on stage and the uh, sort of things that you couldn't get in our local theatre were suddenly on display. And I was lucky because it was the last musical he wrote. And it's difficult to remember these days how huge he was. It was before Andrew Lloyd Webber. He was the number, the king, really, of, of, of musicals. And uh, it had a huge impression on me. And made me want not to be an actor, but to find out how theatre worked and how did the scenery work and how did they get it all, how did they get it up and ready. And, I, I became intrigued with acting because I enjoyed watching other people act. You mentioned Andrew Lloyd Webber then, mm. and you said I never, Ivan Novello was way before that. But talking about Andrew Lloyd Webber, what's made his work so timeless, and in particular Cats? Well, there's always a moment, at least one, often many in his musicals, that... Uh, comes out of the blue, you haven't been expecting it. It might be a high note, it might be a sudden rush of activity on the stage, but immensely theatrical. And the challenge, I suppose, for Tom Hooper, who directed this film of Cats, is so uh, can that um, stage magic be transformed, translated into cinema magic? And um, it has been, in my view, and, and it, it, it can. It could happen because the, the material was so strong. To begin with, the lyrics by a considerable poet and playwright, T.S. Eliot. He was writing them about the time I was being born. He wrote them for his uh, godchildren to entertain them. It was, Cats was designed to entertain children. And then uh, Andrew arrived and realised there was, there was potential for to add music to these lyrics. And... Um, I think it's just the gradual build-up uh, of, of um, great talents coming together and um, witness the cast list for this film. You've worked with some absolute masters of, of, of theatre performing their work. What's, just, just last question on, on, on Andrew Webber. What's, what's his gift, do you think, as a, story, as, as a songwriter and a storyteller? Well, I think that, that he, that he loves the theatre. Uh, and, uh, and tells a good story. And, and, and a story has been <laughs> organised out of this raw material of the poems of, of the cats. Uh, and, uh, yes, I, th I, th I think that... Um, and Andrew clearly likes uh, entertaining people. It's not just the tunes, it's, it's the whole theatricality which presents the songs. I want to talk about, about uh, Tom Hooper now. Tell us, what did you think when he first presented you with this character? What were your initial thoughts? Well, I immediately understood him. He, he's an, he's a, an actor from the past who's had a career which he remembers uh, as having been had some success. Uh, but he's looking back on those old days. He's he's now a bit decrepit, uh, and rather keen for his life to take a new turn for the better, which is why he comes to audition to to try and win the prize of being carried up to the next level of living and another, have another life. Uh, 
Well, that's rather appealing to someone of my age. I do get another life every time I'm, I work, really, because you're, you're in the company of people on the whole who are younger than you are. Uh, and if they've got any talent like the people have in this movie, it just gives you uh, lots, of, uh, lots of energy to, to carry on. So uh, I didn't think really of Gus as a cat, but, but as, a, as the old actor. But he is a cat. It's a joke, because a theatre cat doesn't perform. A theatre cat keeps the mice and the rats down, the vermin in empty theatres in the middle of the night. But uh, no, th this theatre cat is, uh, is a performer, and uh, so I, I felt some resonance, some, some kinship. How was Gus perceived by the other cats, Ian? Well, it's very nice in the, the, that in this version, at any rate, um, the people are very attentive to him and, and give him some respect. You may not quite know who he was or have seen him in his glory days, but um, they, they recognise a fellow a professional. And uh, as happens in real life, I, I find older actors on the whole um, get an easy ride from younger members of the company who appreciate they've been there and done that. Uh, even though in this case I haven't, I've not been in that many musicals, certainly not at this level. Can I ask you to introduce the, the, the song that Gus sings in, in, in Cats and, and des describe the song to me if, if you would? I think if you fell in with um, Gus at his club, which takes place in the back of a neighbouring pub, is the lyric. Uh, you would sit back very happily and listen to him uh, reminisce, and that's what he does really in his song. And He's quite boastful, but he's telling the younger cats who are listening um, what his life used to be like. And um, even though now he's decrepit and can't do what he used to be able to do, so it's a little bit melancholy. I was going to say, my next question would be, you know, um, uh, in what ways did you find it moving, this song? There's a moment when a Mr. Mistopheles, the failed magician, is desperately trying to conjure up, make something happen that would change uh, everything in the story. And uh, when he achieves it, I find myself watching a little sniff and a gulp because uh, it, suddenly, out of nowhere, I, I, I was, <laughs> I'd been manipulated into a state of being ready to be moved. Well, you don't really expect that, do you, when you go to see a great big extravagant musical, that it will move you. It also makes you laugh. Hmm. I'd like to ask you about your, your um, working history with Judy Dench, if you could set that up for me, and the fact that you reunite in this movie. Well, Judy and, and I, when we were a lot younger, uh, fell in to a pattern of working together over a number of years, and uh, we were we did a play for for a year on in the West End of London when we were youngsters, and, and shortly after that we were in the Royal Shakespeare Company together, and we played at the Macbeths, and we did plays by Ibsen and uh, Bernard Shaw. And I thought that was probably going to be my life. I was going to be um, Judy Dench's leading man. And uh, uh, so we became close friends and remained that. But we haven't worked together of late. Um, and so very nice to come back. And uh, we spent a lot of our days when we weren't actually shooting, talking about old times and marvelling at the array of talent in front of us. I don't, I, I don't mean the stars, that, that's obvious. But the ensemble, the, the cats, the, the people who, the Jellico cats who sing and dance in a spectacular way. And Judy and I were a bit in awe, really. I bet. And can you just tell me why Judy was perfect for this particular character? Well, Old Deuteronomy is respected by everybody. Judy Dench, too. Uh, uh, 
But I think it's a bit more than that. Uh, we all love Judy, and uh, she was able to uh, gather that affection into the situation so that uh, we, we not only respect you, old Deuteronomy, but we love her as well. And uh, just happy to see her. And she radiates such warmth. It comes zinging across out of the screen at you. Yeah. You said about how in awe you were of, of the youngsters watching, watching them do it. Can I ask you to talk a little bit about the dancing in this film and how it's used as such a powerful tool in the storytelling of Cats? Mm. Well, if you're coming to the film of Cats to see human beings being cats, you might be a bit disappointed because this isn't Lion King, we, we, in which they seem to be real animals. No, no these are actors pretending to be cats or looking for the cat within. But the dancing, at times, if you screwed up your eyes, they did. They looked like cats. They moved exactly like cats. Astonishing. Because a, a human body is not like a, a, a cat body at all. It's the range of the dance that I liked. Classical ballet at its very height from Francesca Hayward uh, and Robbie Fairchild. And then the tap dancing. And then the the bebop, is that what it's called? And, and, and the twins, those two remarkable tall lads who can do anything. <laughs> but everyone seems to be able to do uh, anything. And, and that, that's, where you, um, that's where you have the illusion that you're actually seeing cats. And they're, they're human beings. It's, uh, yes. Why was it important to record the songs live, which is how Tom Hooper does it? Just set that up for me and, and why it was important to do it on a production like this. Well, normally, when someone's singing in, in a film, uh, they are miming to a pre-recording that they've made, or, in some cases, that somebody else has made. I believe Audrey Hepburn didn't sing in My Fair Lady, but somebody else sang. I think I've got that right. Uh, but here, everyone singing is actually singing, and they're actually singing in the moment at which they're being filmed. So. It means that you're not stuck with some performance that you gave in the cellar of a recording studio four weeks before and putting all your efforts into making the mime convincing. And, and here you were able to alter things in the moment, be spontaneous. And um, for a stage actor, it it's, makes it much, much easier. Ian, can I ask you to set up you know, why this is such a spectacular and unique holiday experience? It's coming out, it's going to be a big Christmas movie. Tell us you know, why it's the perfect film for everybody, everywhere. There's a, an institution we have in, in the United Kingdom called Pantomime. It happens at the holiday period. Every city has a pantomime. And what happens in a pantomime? Well, it's mayhem. A story is told, a simple story, moral tale, and uh, there's cross-dressing, and there's singing, and there's dancing, and there's rhyme, and um, everyone has a good time, and the whole family goes to see it. Cats on stage um, lent, I think, towards pantomime, and that experience. You could take anybody to see it, your, your granny or your, or your grandchild, and... Uh, there'll be something for them to enjoy in it. And um, I think that's the audience it's going to appeal to. And when a family is most together, when it's holiday times, I, if this doesn't become the film you have to watch uh, when it's available on Christmas Day, right with the family, round the tree, I'd be amazed. Not that it's Christmassy, but it has... It's about it's about people coming together, people liking each other, um, the good triumphing over the naughty and the evil, and and everyone being themselves and and uh, having a, a high old time. Uh, why wouldn't that be a good family movie? Hmm. My last question: What was it like walking onto those sets? Because, I mean, I saw a couple of props yesterday. I saw a prop dustbin. I couldn't believe the size of it. What was it like for you guys to walk onto a whole set at Pinewood? You, you, when, you, when you see a big chair and table, and you can walk underneath it with ease, it, they don't suddenly look big. You feel small. 
We had this in uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, when similar effects when they had to make the Hobbit actors look smaller. The scenery was made bigger. So I was familiar with, with, with the experience. But you know, all those holidays that people have at Disneyland, Universal Studios, it's all about making an audience feel they are part of and are in the films that they've enjoyed. Well, I was in this film. I was there. That scenery was not scenery. It was my home. It was where, where I was going to live for, for the weeks while we were doing the film. It, it, it's such a, a, such a joy. As, um, because I am still the little boy who fell in love with the theatre by... And, and acting and performing and singing and dancing by watching it on stage. Uh, but here I'm now in it. And I'm um, back to being 12 again. Very happy. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Is that from the Goonies? Nice. Hey!